Hello, everybody. We're here at FC Wonder Kid, and uh, we're doing a little something different this time. We've got a uh, interview. It's, it's going to be our second interview. Um, and this time around, I am uh, really excited to welcome Kevin Paredes uh, to the channel um, to have a little chat with us here at FC Wonder Kid. Um, Kevin Paredes, uh, you know, I'm going to ask you uh, to introduce yourself in a second, but he's a 19 year old winger, defender. Played at DC United in Major League Soccer, and then recently, and I mean recently, made the jump over to Germany uh, with VFL Wolfsburg. Um, and we are very, very excited to have him here with us. So, how are you doing today, Kevin? I'm doing good. Thank you for inviting me to the second podcast. Appreciate it. Man. Yeah, I appreciate you joining us. Um, you are at the tail end. We were just talking beforehand, and you were at the tail end already of your off season before yeah. you came back. Wow. Yeah, uh, I was here for okay. four weeks in Virginia, and two days I leave to back to Germany. So I'm excited for preseason. I mean, it it baffles me when I was looking at your actual um, track record. I guess you could say that it's not even been two years since you've had your professional debut with DC United. Um, and I think it was, what, seven months ago, you were called into a U.S. men's national team camp. Uh, and it's only been five months since you were signed by Wolfsburg. So um, when when does it all kind of calm down for you? Or do you have other surprises to announce to us? Yeah, I hope more surprises come out soon. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I learned something new, so hopefully more surprises come soon. Yeah, well, it's probably been like drinking through a fire hose uh, for you in terms of learning about the culture, learning about, you know, Wolfsburg as a club, um, the Bundesliga. Um, how has that, I, I know <laughs> you signed five months ago and then it's the end of the season. Uh, signing midseason had to, been, had to have been pretty tough for you. Yeah, it was definitely a lot of challenges, but, you know, me, I was definitely up for the ta- challenge. I wanted something new, something different. This is definitely more difficult than, uh, you know, just staying here at home, playing for D.C. and MLS. It's much more difficult. You know, I was put out of my comfort zone, but I think that's what I needed at the time. So, um, yeah, it's been I'm learning every day, different culture, different language. So it's good so far. Good. That's good. Now, I know you're in Virginia right now at home, um, but... Are there any similarities between D.C., uh, Virginia, and Wolfsburg, uh, or have you not really gotten acclimated just yet um, to the surroundings there? <laughs> Wolfsburg and the DMV area is just not the same <laughs> at all. <laughs> yeah. Well, what are the biggest differences then? I know it's a, it's a pretty industrial area, right? Yeah, it's D.C. It's just, you know, city and all that. And then, you know, think of Wolfsburg, you think the opposite of that. They have one. You know, one, you know, Volkswagen, you know, like the headquarters, the manufacturer that just towers over the whole like little city there is. And after that, it's just straight farmland. So <laughs> it's much yeah. different. I mean, as far as German clubs go, I think it's a still a pretty young club. I think it was like 1938 or something it was uh, started, but it's been a successful club. Um, mm-hmm. And it's it's been one. I know that there aren't many teams aside from Bayern Munich that have won the Bundesliga in the last you know fifteen years, and Wolfsburg is one of them. So there's a little fun fact, right? Um, but <laughs> I mean, what what baffles me um, in looking at your history with all this? Um, have you did you always know? I mean, when you stepped foot uh, for Loudoun United, um, stepped foot on the field for the first time. Uh, and then you made your MLS debut not long after that. I mean, did you always know that it was professional or bust? Or at what point in time amidst that training, did, was it somebody that convinced you you could go pro? Or was you were you always laser focused, like, I'm, I'm ready for this? Yeah, for me, it was always, I was always wanted to go pro since the minute I touched the ball. But I just didn't know it was going to come this soon. It was quick and this soon. At 16, I'd never imagined. You know, at the time, I was thinking about, oh, Maybe I got to go to college and play there, hopefully get drafted. But I don't know. Just I just turned up out of nowhere and just, you know, when I was focused on it and I really wanted it, I, I worked for it. Okay. All right. And um, who would you give in terms of the, um, the academy itself? I mean, I know you've got guys like Chad Ashton, who is the 
He's the interim coach again for the second time, I think, right now. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, who who there within the academy would you kind of give most credit for kind of pushing you along and, and making sure that if you want professional, this is how you go and you get it? Yeah, I think um, my U14, 15 coach, John Bell, he was, okay. you know, a big help. You know, he, you know, he rewarded me when I needed to be rewarded, but at the same time, he, you know, sat me aside when, you know, my, my game wasn't up to par. So uh, he kept it real with me and, and told me I can go far, but I just got to stay focused and continue to play well, consistent. And I think that was the coach that really helped me the most while I was in the academy. That's, uh, and that's important because what a lot of people for us right now, I'm trying to convince the world that MLS academies are just getting online right now in terms of uh, you've got guys that have come up with you uh, mm-hmm. that are starting to make their footprint as well. And uh, uh, guys like Moses Nyman, right, and Griffin. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, since you left, I think they've signed a couple others like uh, Jackson Hopkins. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, what is it about the United Academy? You've got so much talent to pull from. Um, do you feel like this is just the beginning for DC United's Academy? No, oh, for sure. Um, yeah. we're, we're just a small example of what's to come. Um, the DMV area just has so much rich, just rich talent. I think that, you know, I don't think the world or the U S, you know, appreciates yet. Um, but yeah, it's coming. I, I went out to the Academy game, uh, I think last week or two weeks ago, and it was just amazing to see all this, the young guys come and, you know, ball out. And uh, there's some already that you know, I think can make the step already to the first team. So. Yeah, I, I think. Okay, you might. I mean, for for our uh, listeners, you mind? You got any names in particular? For sure, the young boy Gavin Turner. I think he's. Okay. I think he's next up. So. All uh, right. He's a great young talent. Okay, Gavin Turner. And what position does he play? I I, I feel bad. I feel sheepish that I don't actually know what position he is. He's a nice winger. So. Okay. Yeah. There you go. There you go. And and that's what I love about this. That what DC has done in terms of giving. The um, it, it's one thing to applaud your youth academy to sign to homegrown contracts and then not give them the opportunity to see the field. And, and DC has been very different about that. And they obviously were not shy. And you were, if you were, you know, good enough, you were old enough, right? That's essentially mm-hmm. the, the motto there. Um, was that particularly like Hernan Losado? Was it Ben Olsen before that? Or is it just kind of the ethos of DC United's academy that? That is, uh, that feels like that. Yeah, I, I think, you know, what started off was Ben, Ben Olsen really, you know, he loved me. They, they, he, <laughs> I even call him dad sometimes because the way that he, he treats me on and off the pitch, he is just like a father. Um, yeah, this guy really loved the way I played, the way I hustled during training and all this. And I think he really gave me, you know, my first platform to, you know, express myself on the field. And, you know, at times I'll be playing and he's like, Kev, just, do whatever you want and go out on the field and just do do what makes you do best the, to help the team. So he really gave me the confidence. He really gave me, you know, he, he allowed me to be me on the field playing against professional. I think that really gave me the big confidence boost. And then Hernan just topped off with it and just helped me, you know, grow in the past year and you know, really also gave me the freedom as well. Great. That's great. And did the positional flexibility come later or was that a early in the academy um, type of situation in terms of being able to play? Obviously, you're on the wing, but you can play fullback. You can play all the way up uh, top on the wing. Um, did that positional flexibility, was that kind of ingrained in you? Or was that something that um, was developed by one of those coaches? Yeah, it was developed by Ben, mostly Benny, and but also Paul Ariola as well. Um, nice. Yeah, those two. You know, when I was in the academy, I only knew winger. And I only knew, you know, to play in the right wing, the left wing, that's all I knew. And then I didn't really defend as much at all. And then I started, you know, tracking back and stuff throughout the academy. But it was nothing really like, you know, a different position type. But um, I remember when we're coming back from COVID, um, our left back, left wing back got hurt or he wasn't training that day. So they just automatically... Stuck me back there. Paul was coming back from rehab. And he's like, Kev, he, he told Ben, he's like, I think Kev would be good at left wing back. And I was like, dude, I don't, I've never defended in my life. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. And we're, we're doing 11 aside, and I 
go up, make a good play, run all the way back, make a good tackle. And then ever since then, Ben's like, yeah, you're, you're going to play there. You're going you're gonna, to gonna run up and down the lane. You're going to defend for us and you're going to attack for us. And then sometimes he throws me at eight. Sometimes he throws me at 10. And then it's just, I'm just learning everything. And I think that helped me a lot. Yeah. I mean, that flexibility is huge. Um, I, I would imagine, especially when you step into a situation like Europe, um, like mm-hmm. the Liga, where being able to get on the field in any way, shape or form as a young guy is what it's all about. So that's, mm-hmm. that's awesome. Um, so speaking of that, that transfer, I mean, can you, can you take us through at all um, what it was like to, you know, did an agent do most of the speaking for you or, uh, were these personal phone calls that you were taken with, I, I, if I'm not, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe City Football Group was coming after you, maybe Red Bull Salzburg, some others, but um, you had some phenomenal teams, phenomenal groups that were uh, definitely talking to you. How does that courting process, how does that happen? Um, start with a phone call or where does it go? I guess it starts with a phone call to my agent. I, Me and my agent were really close, but he, he allows me just to play on the football side. He doesn't. He told me my work is the consequences of what's happening with the groups, with the teams that are coming through. So, you know, for me at the time, it wasn't really me paying attention much uh, mm-hmm. of what teams were calling or what teams were asking. It was just, you know, the next day I need to perform even better, you know. So I let him, I trust him a lot. So I let him deal with all that. And the only thing he wanted me to do is just be uh, be focused on my, my game. And that's how everything planned out. And it worked out well. I only had focus on one thing, which is performing every day. You know, I let him do the rest. And, you know, when a time it came to sit down and, you know, discuss things, then we both sat down and we both focused up for a bit. And, yeah, that's how everything planned out, I think. And when that time came, you ultimately decided Wolfsburg. Um, so what was it about Wolfsburg um, that put them as the best next step for you? Yeah, I think they sh- the, the amount of support and the amount of, you know, dedication and passion they showed to me uh, about joining them and the, the correct plan, you know, compared to everyone else, there's just a no-brainer to pick them. They showed the best interest. They showed that, you know, they really value me as a player and as a person. So, you know, at the end, it was just obvious to pick Wolfsburg and such a great club they are. They're, they've been developing me very well so far. Um, getting me stronger, helping me on my game, helping me on my weak points. So, you know, it was, for me, I think it's the right plan right now. And it's, it's going pretty well. And I can't wait for, you know, the season up with them because, you know, this off-season program that had me doing something crazy. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I was just excited for it. Nice. And do you execute that on your own or do you have somebody around you um, that you'll meet up with um, to get it done? Yeah, uh, uh, like you said before, Brian Ko, he's still on loan from Wolfsburg as well, and he lives in Maryland. So we meet up and we we both do the runs together. He got the same program I did, and we you know we can we did it. He's uh, he's back in Germany right now, but you know the past couple of weeks we've been doing it together, and it's good because he pushes me and I push him. We've been playing with each other since I don't know like seven or eight, so I've known him for a long time, and that was a great guy. And, we just both push each other. We both don't want to be last in any runs that we have to do. So we're, if we're going, we're supposed to go a certain amount of uh, kilometers. We go even more. Or we were supposed to go some speed. We go do even more because that's how competitive we are, both are. Great, and that's that's obviously exactly what you want. And I'd imagine that when you get back to Germany, um, it seems like Wolfsburg is. I, I don't know. I think they're trying to appeal to FC Wonderkid. Um, because it seems like they've brought in uh, a whole lot of new talent, a whole lot of guys that it might take some time for you all to gel, but it's clear that they've got a future in mind. Um, I know with the signing of Patrick Wimmer, you've got um, Jacob Kaminsky, I believe, that just signed as well. Who's He's another left-sided player, right? He's a winger. Um, so uh, when it comes down to it, it seems like you're not only going to have guys like John Brooks throwing you around. Oh, maybe not. I shouldn't say that. But Max Sequois throwing you around. Um, but you're also going to have these young guys that you can, uh, uh, you know, feed off of. So who there, um, since you got to and stepped um, off on into Wolfsburg, uh, any of those young guys that you, you became close with pretty early on? Yeah. Um, Astor Bronx, uh, nice. definitely. 
uh, this guy is basically my brother already. He's a great person, great player as well. Uh, Maxim Lacroix, this, this guy's too funny. And, uh, he invites me to his house. We hang out. We uh, just cool people, and also the Nementia brothers, Felix and Lucas, are both you know great people. So I've, you know, so far I've had a lot of good people around there that brought me in, treat me as their little brother kind of, and just beating me around like it's <laughs> like we've known each other for a while. So it's, it's been really good. I, I love these guys. So I'm great. that's awesome. That's great. And, uh, you know, I might as well ask, who would you rather take one-on-one, uh, Maxon's Lacroix or John Brooks? Who do you think you could get by? Both great defenders, but <laughs> Maxon's just, just way too fast. So I, Jay's a little bit slower, but this, this yeah. dude can get stuck in jazz. So I might have to say Jay Brooks. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, I you know, I hope he I hope he sees this. Challenges you. Uh no, but I, I did hear I did hear that John was uh you know a big part of your transition there, obviously being an American, an American that's been established in the Bundesliga for so long. Yeah. Um he, he he was a big part in get helping you helping you over there. Is that true? Yeah, it's very true. This guy wow, unbelievable person. This guy I remember um they had, the day I got there they had a couple days break. Uh, from a game so um, you know everyone was out you know maybe go to Berlin or to France or something just for a short period of time this guy heard that I was coming to the team he stayed at home and um, I wanted to myself I wanted to get a training session in just to you know freshen up my legs get my touches ready for training the next day this guy came in on his off day and just came and trained with me and introduced himself I was like wow this guy's this guy really you know he's a great person so this guy throughout this whole time even on his last game, it was sad to see him go because the the bond and friendship that we created it was great, and mm. you know this guy was top guy. Yeah, yeah, that's that's I've heard that a lot about John um, amidst you know talks with other uh, players. Obviously, the narrative around the U.S. men's national team with him not being on the roster. Uh, for me, I would I, I mean he absolutely from quality alone deserves to be there. So hopefully, uh, hey, that's that's why I guess you know the winter. Uh, Qatar World Cup is a weird one, but you know, from John's perspective and from your perspective, um, you got to think that there's still a good chance. You know, you could work your way on if off season goes well. If the start to the Bundesliga season goes well, um, is is the target getting on the plane for Qatar? For sure, that's what I've been working for um, okay. this whole year, this whole past year, these two years. I've been working for that a lot. You know, me and Greg's keep in contact and you know he's he's always has supported me he always has trust in me it's just a matter of fact when i'm ready for it and you know i'm continuing working and i want the, i really want that spot and i'm gonna do whatever whatever i can throughout this time to, you know really make that jump and really show everyone that i'm ready and uh, yeah it's gonna be a really good preseason um something i have to be laser focused on and you know make sure i'm in my top top play because you know Everyone wants to play in the World Cup, and for me, it doesn't matter the age. I want to play in it right now. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do everything I can in this next couple months to, you know, hopefully get on that spot as well. Great, and um, it, it, I don't know if it's a complication per se, but you know, have you been in contact? I know Wolfsburg just went through a coaching change. Coaches tend to change uh, after a while, um, but the new boss has a quite the pedigree. Obviously, winning at AC Mon- or not winning at AC Monaco, but previously being at Monaco and winning with Bayern. Previous to that, has have you been in touch with uh, with Nico Kovac at all? Nah, not yet. They've been really giving us our vacation, just make us stick to our program. So yeah, not yet. But you know, I, I, everyone says this guy's a really top guy, and this guy likes to. We can tell this guy wants us to run and uh, to be fit because the, the way this program is, is no other preseason program I've ever done in my life. So, uh, yeah, so uh, I can't wait to meet him. I think he's going to be great. Yeah, I, I, um, I think in because Aurelian Schuamani, right, just made that move from Monaco to Real Madrid, mm-hmm. he's said and dropped a couple quotes about how big Nico Kovac was uh, to his development and said he didn't truly know how to defend. So get ready for that. He didn't truly know how to defend until uh, he met Niko Kovac. So um, that's, that, that's hey, I mean, do you see yourself more as a left back now 
or do you see yourself uh, still as a winger first and foremost, or is it just a mentality of I, I want to get on the field and I'll do whatever I have to do for the team? It's kind of both. Like yeah. I, I see my game, you know, panning out to be a left back in the future. It's just about, like I'm still in my attack of mode. It's just learning, you know, the key the principles of defending and and just playing more games in that left back role. But you know, I'm a winger to heart. And, you know, <laughs> at left back, you're going to see me going up the field and do my winger type plays and stuff as well. But, yeah, um, yeah I, it's going to be great, good development for me to be under him because, like you said, this guy's going to help me tremendously amount my defending. That's, you know, that left back spot, you really need to be, you know, a lockdown defender. So I think that's, he's going to help me a bunch during this time. Well, that's, that is, um, I mean, in terms of personal goals for next season, obviously World's Cup, that's great, but um, and and that is uh, definitely you know a means to an end. Um, but in terms of looking at it more locally and um, just heading into a first full season in Germany, um, are you looking for a starting eleven spot, or is it just I want to contribute? I want to you know still be able to express myself. I mean, what is the thought process in the early months? Um, of this new season, which I believe the fixtures come out tomorrow, so Lord, you'll know yeah. who you're facing day one. Um, but yeah, yeah what, what are those goals for this season, um, kind of more locally within Germany? Yeah, I definitely want to, you know, break into the team more than I did last year. Um, you know, I need to start, you know, start small, get minutes here and there, get, you know, try to get in as a sub, and hopefully get my first goals and stuff like that. Um, yeah, but definitely to work my my hardest to you know be in that 18 every weekend and um you know come in to be you know a help to the team or want to contribute a lot and then later out to see how that goes because you know by the end of the season you know i want to you know be starting you know i want goals assists and all that so yeah for right now it's just to work my hardest to you know contribute for the team Nice, and you you have your celebration picked out for your uh, your first goal, first Bundesliga yeah. goal. Or, okay, yeah. all right. Yeah, me and Max okay, well, Sanfrequa, we we've been talking a bunch about my first goal and what we're gonna do for our celebration. So I like stay that. tuned for that. Me and Max Sanz for a celebration. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. And I think you guys you start with a DFB Pokal game, right? Um, so you, you know, I, I want to see it then. I think we'll see it then. Um, <laughs> no, that that's great. Well, I gotta say. Um, do you think there is anybody in this in this Bundesliga uh, this coming season that can finally take Bayern down a peg um, and end their their run of ten titles in a row? I don't see why not. Wolfsburg can't. Okay, all right. I, like I don't it. see why not. I mean, you got Jonas Vin scoring goals uh, left and right for Denmark. Yeah, got, yeah he just scored for Denmark. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you've got. I, I'm seeing the pieces come together. I know it was a tough probably a tough transition for the team last year. Um, and there, there are some other things, but you guys are starting to really get the right pieces together. And it's just a matter of if it all comes together. So, yeah, I, I would think um, um, all those goals for you uh, should be realized moving forward, but to, not necessarily to end it, but we always like to do a couple quick fires. I don't know if you've ever seen in any of our podcasts, but it's basically me just peppering, uh, my host Alex with a bunch of you know one word question or not one word questions one answer questions mm -hmm. um, and I, I'm going to ask you um, a couple a couple tough ones here. Um, yeah. All right, who was the best American footballer ever? Uh, Donovan. And Donovan. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And Dempsey's got he's probably got something to say about that, but yeah, no, Land. <laughs> I'd imagine you learned quite a bit from Landon Donovan, so that's 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 good. Okay, mm -hmm. Landon Donovan. Uh, I think I might know the answer to this one because I have heard you are a Barca fan, but um, Leo Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo? Messi, no brainer, of course. Yeah. Ask you, Messi. <laughs> yeah, my 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 buddy Alex is uh, he's probably he's probably crying into his uh, microphone right now. Um, all right, if someone in your family was asked what talent outside of football that you have, what would it be? Either dancing or basketball. Okay. Basketball, mm -hmm. nice. Are you, mm -hmm. uh, you uh, DC fan? Yeah, yeah, Wizards. 
Mm-hmm. And Wizards. Mm-hmm. I, I, this is how much I know about the NBA. I almost wanted to call it the Bullets. Good. <laughs> Goodness. Uh, I am a Sixers fan, but I'm a fair weather Sixers fan. I, I assume you've seen Hustle on Netflix, right? Hustle, yeah, yeah. I actually watched it um, yesterday. Yeah. You watched it yesterday? Okay, see, that's Philly. <laughs> that is Philly in and of itself. Yeah. That's where I live. Okay, cool. Um, and the World Cup champion in 2022 will be? USA. Yeah? All right. USA. It's a lot of people out there that want to say it's a 2026 project, but they certainly got uh, <laughs> certainly got some tools. Um, I got to ask about that. No, you know, not I'm I'm known for my sidebars, but uh, how was I mean? You didn't get to spend a lot of time in camp, but I know previous to the Gold Cup, right? You were called in as a you know non rostered participant. You were called into your first Cup. Uh, I believe it was in December, but an injury kept you from partaking in it. But um, how is it being with those guys? Does it really feel like it feels like there's a camaraderie that's building and building every time they get in? They've had a tough qualification process. I mean, how much are you just itching um, to join that average age of 22, 23 uh, type of camp? Yeah, it's, it's, it's everything I imagined. You know, some of the players that, you know, I grew up watching uh, in the MLS and, you know, some players I watch now, it's, it would, they were all there and it was just cool to be around them. You know, they're as as much as they keep it professional. You know, on cameras, they they're just like bigger brothers uh, outside the pitch. So it's it, being there with them is it, so fun. Uh, they're so competitive, and it's just really nice to be there. I really want to go back again. I just love being in those camps. And and who would you say uh, who's the biggest goofball out of all of them? I remember Aaron Long being goofy. Yeah. Uh, but also Kellen Acosta was funny as well. Okay, nice. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, I, Aaron Long. That, that's, I've, I would have guessed Weston McKenney, but that's just, I, I, I was in the camp with Weston at the time. It, it okay. was the, in December, so it was mainly the MLS players. And okay, the Gold Cup was cool. mainly the MLS players as well. So I haven't All been right, in a group is. with uh, the European players yet. All right, that makes a little more sense then, because uh, <laughs> obviously, obviously he's got that on-camera persona. Yeah. So. He's he's uh he's done. But um, all right, World Cup champion, U.S. Men's National Team. You heard it here first. Um, yes, all right, last one. You know, building a five aside, we always like to do this. Um, mm-hmm. Building a five aside, it's a little tough, which is why I'm gonna like talk a little bit to give you a little bit of time to think. Unless you've been asked this question for, um, you're one of the players, but you got to pick one from each position. Uh, mm-hmm. Doesn't necessarily need to be the best player ever, but maybe it could be somebody you've played with or whatever. So. Uh, mm-hmm. Building a five aside, who would you pick as goalkeeper? Victor Valdez. Victor Valdez. Okay, so you, we are going Barca here, like that. Mm-hmm. Um, defender. Like a center back or outside back? Mm, well, center back. Give us a center back. Center back. I'm going to go Maxence Lacroix. Maxence Lacroix, all right. He's mm-hmm. made an impression. I like that. Um, mm-hmm. Midfielder. Six, eight, ten. It could be whatever, whatever you want it to be. I'm a ten. I'm. I'm gonna say Messi at ten. Okay. And mm-hmm. striker. Who would you have at striker? I, I guess I have to say CR seven. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So you've got basically probably the Max Holmes Lacroix is the only one in there um, that obviously uh, has some. I don't know some working to do, right? I mean, Messi, <laughs> Ronaldo, Valdez. And Maxence Lacroix is uh, has made an impression on you, which is great. I mm-hmm. have seen him play a lot, and he is uh, a phenomenal defender. And I, I think, I mean, he's he's part of the future there at Wolfsburg. So, mm-hmm. all right. Well, I really do appreciate you you joining us and um, the, the time we spent. And hopefully, this is not the you know the last time we do this. Um, but uh, I look forward to seeing you. You know, get over there. You said you leave when? When do you go to? Saturday. Oh, Saturday. Okay. Mm-hmm. You're already saying your goodbyes, and you just got home, basically, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Is there a possibility that you'll be able to get uh, your family over there for some of these games coming up? You know, when you have that feeling, you're going to get your first goal? Yeah, for sure. I, you know, I, we speak – I tell my parents all the time, I want them to come and live with me, but <laughs> that's not how it works out. So, But, yeah, they'll be there a lot. My mom doesn't like flying, but, you know, she, she'll make it for me. <laughs> Any, anything for her boy, right? Yeah. Um, 
All right. Well, I, I really do appreciate you taking the time. Uh, like I said, hopefully we'll circle back when we get better at this interview thing. But uh, I, I thank you for being a guinea pig. Um, and, um, yeah, we wish you the best of luck this season. Thank right. you so much. I appreciate it. Okay. And if, uh, you know, that's here, that's a wrap uh, here at FC Wonder Kid. And if you like this, please smash the like button. Um, please follow us. And um, we will see you next time.